<laughs> What's up, everybody? This is your host. This is damn. I'm all stumbled now. You know, you was about to say pussy. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Y'all we're, know each we're, other. Y'all, we're live. We were talking about pop filters. Oh, you just started talking whatever. about whatever. We now we know what's on your mind. Whatever. Now we know Stop. what's on your mind. God damn it! This is all live. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> it's too early for this. <laughs> I was about to say it's afternoon. It's afternoon. I mean, I'm yeah, we're drinking tea. A the tea has been spilled. What's up, everybody? It's your host, Jarrell Washington. Welcome back to Filming in Progress with my co-host, Isai. Yes, sir. And we have a very, 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 very special guest. We've been trying to get him on the podcast for like the last three years, even though this has only been like a year we've been doing this. (laughs) Go ahead, introduce yourself, kind sir. Sean is the first name. Y'all know me, I think. I don't know who the audience is. Who is this this for? (laughs) We don't even know who the audience is. We're just glad they listen. Don't don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, this is this is Mr. Sean East in the flesh too, because right. you know it's hard to get a hold of this man. <laughs> yeah, I swear, all right. he, I swear he's like one of the Assassin Creed. <laughs> he just like disappears into the night. I try then. to keep that on the DL, you know, like I don't wear capes, but like yes, I do jump <laughs> off of buildings and land in like. Sean's just hey, he's just parkouring all throughout the city. <laughs> Dude, somebody's got to do that job, like. <laughs> doesn't pay, but... Oh, my goodness. No, man. Thank you for coming, though. I'm glad you were able to make it. Yeah, man. Yeah, Finally. I'm glad to get on the calendar, like, especially for holiday season, just, like, hanging yeah. out with people more. That's prioritizing true. Thanksgiving's that. right around the corner. Dude, yeah. Nice to yes. be thankful for everybody around here right this now. This is cool. I, I love Thanksgiving week or, like, holiday weeks because it's, like, everyone's, like, free, you know? Like, you just call someone randomly, and it's, like, I know you're not working. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's yeah, catch yeah. up, what you know? What are you doing yeah. real quick? Yeah. No, that's 100%. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I should just kind of give some... Some blank calls. Yeah. Like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Go through the contacts. Should we yeah. do that right here on the podcast? Yeah, right. <laughs> Ooh, that's probably. Let's I know see, there's some. Let's names. see who will pop up real quick. I know there are some names. Like, I my contacts have been the same since I had a flip phone. Like, hey. we're talking since <laughs> man, 2003. 2003? Oh, okay. All right. All right. I did. I did something I regret. So my last day of, of high school as a senior, I was like, man, we're all graduating. You know how you, like you get emotional, and nostalgic. You're like, I don't want to forget these people. So I got like everyone in my class's phone number. So I have like three hundred contacts in here from like two thousand and fourteen. Bro, you ain't talked to not near one. I haven't talked to any of them. Yeah, but (laughs) I'm like holiday season before this podcast is up. Hey, yeah, I, I, (laughs) my, my challenge to you, I dare you to wish them all a happy holidays. Every (laughs) three, every person from high school. Yeah, I don't, I don't don't care that much. Do it, and I'm just like that's a lot of energy. You send out a mass text. I'd rather just um, tweet it out. You know, can you send out a three hundred mass text? On Apple, uh, I, I don't know why you. Yeah, I don't think you green. can do that. Why um, would you want to? Why not? <laughs> Your phone would just be like blown up. Even if one percent of people respond to that, that's like what? What's the math? If we planned a party, three? <laughs> is it three? 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 <laughs> yes. Three. <laughs> you said that. <laughs> I said ten. I was thinking ten percent. Add a zero. <laughs> Add a decimal point. I suck at math, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. I will say that on the air. <laughs> Oh man, so Sean, tell us real quick, man. Like, so what got you? What got you into? It? We know you as the gaffer of KC. Like, you <laughs> apparently you have like the magic hands to make things just light up and like appear magically. So, like, I want to know what got you into gaffing, man. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, so I think when I had started out, I mean, I, I had created an LLC in 2012 when I was still in school, and that was just like me wanting to just shoot. And then a lot of that was coming from a place where, like, music was my first love. So just, like, naturally wanted to gravitate towards, like, creating story um, visually for things that, like, had rhythm and emotion. Mm. So it was, like, kind of a marrying of, like, the things that, like, I, you know, were, like, the things that I loved the most. Um, So I took some, like, broadcasting stuff in, like, high school. But obviously, like, you don't even dip into anything, like, lighting. Like, there's lights and you see that, like, with equipment, but, like, you don't mess with it. So I had just kind of been, like, shooting just, like, on my own freelancing for a couple years, like, interning while in school, like, with, you know, people that I knew from college or people that were already working in Kansas City. Um, And then I just kind of, like, found my way, like, on set and understood that there was, like, definitely just, like, this whole... I mean, like, it's kind of like the mafia is what Tony Ontivero says. Like, Pretty much. <laughs> you really don't understand, like, they're just sort of like this underbelly industry that exists. Like, because I grew up in KC. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I had no idea that you could work in film. But then, like, after getting on set with people and, like, seeing that, like, you know, there's, like, a lot of finessing of, of light and that that really affected the mood, mm-hmm. that completely, like, turned me on to, like, cinematography, like, at a higher level and how that could be, like, achieved through lighting. Mm-hmm. Um 
in how that like totally evokes like the emotion for the purpose of storytelling. Yeah, so I was like true. that like that literally like put a light bulb in my head. I was like, I want to do that. But at that time, like after I finished school in like 2015, I was still thinking like I very much want to be behind camera. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had one <laughs> one fateful job. <laughs> I feel like everybody's probably has had this moment, <laughs> but like it was that job, and it was like so indie film. Um, it was like a short. No, no, it was it was a full length feature, um, and it was shot down in Aransas Pass, Texas, mm. and. Aransas just, Pass. Yeah, Aransas Pass, which is, like, near, like, uh, what's that that town in Texas? Like, it's all right there on the Next coast. Next to San... Uh, on the coast? So, Gall- Gallison or... Um, I'm blanking on it right now. It's, it's just, probably good it's because... It's just Ranvis Pass. I've just... I've never so heard of Ranvis. So much PTSD. Hey, shout out to <laughs> Ranvis Pass, Texas, though. Never heard of you before, yeah, but glad yeah. you're a city. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to go there. Like, let me yeah. be clear. Like, there's not, Dude, we were just getting bitten up by mosquitoes. Like, it was Sheesh. ridiculous just sweating, like, your your whole, you know, weight oh in, like, God. the first 10 minutes of stepping outside. Uh-huh. So, but the whole crewing of that job was just so sloppy. And so, like, I had put, like, my name in the hat because it was a little bit flexible um, that I wanted to be in camera. Uh, we had this awesome DP from L.A., uh, DP Donshim. Shout out to her. Um, Shout out to her. She was the homie. Like, just learned so many things from her. But on that job, I ended up working with my buddy, who was the key grip, uh, Curtis McCarty from St. Louis, who's awesome. I love working with Curtis. Um, learned a ton from him. But I ended up in the grip department just because it was, like, so sloppy. Mm. And then from that point on, that was, like, when I really had my hands on and was, like, actually being, like, allocated in that department where okay. I was, like, being optimized as, like, somebody who was actually touching the grip and the electric. Um so yeah, that that job was like a month and a half. It felt like three years. I'm still pulling sand out of like parts that I didn't know I had. <laughs> you know, like there's this grand thing. <laughs> yeah, it was rough. It was one of the hardest things that I'd ever done in my life, like shooting in the sand dunes and stuff. Like, but I just like fell in love with it. Like every day was like this uphill battle. Wait, San Padre? Um, no, no, no. The movie or the no uh, Aransas Pass. <laughs> Is it next to San Padre? So so, how old were you when you were doing this? Like, what so year was this? I think it was 2015. Okay, this was my second feature because I had worked on the Matchbreaker, and that I was I was an AC for that for the Vetters. Um, mm-hmm. Which yeah, man, freaking now Corey's left us too. So nah, Corey, we'll yeah, he'll be back. where do you go? He was in LA. LA. Yeah, in he LA. moved. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but I yeah, met Corey. it was like recently too. Yeah, I think it was this year in the summer, right? Yeah. So. Um, so work, yeah, I worked on that job, but this was my second feature. And I want to say, well, how old was I in 2015? Um, I had just finished college. So it was 15 or 16. I would have been like 22 or 23. Gotcha. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, um, I keep forgetting I went to college yeah. late. <laughs> like extra late. You went to college for like a whole decade. <laughs> Actually, you're not wrong. Yeah, man. Two, I was two years shy of a decade. <laughs> All the non-traditional students, man, were so easy to befriend. And now I understand why. It's like you walk in there and you're just like a fish out of water like <laughs> yeah but they were all so cool so kudos kudos yeah man. kudos to those kids it's never too late to go never, to school it's never too late to go to pick school. up a book learn something yeah <laughs> i like that learn something that's what we'll title this learn something <laughs> learn something get off your phone pick up a book that's what i'd be doing that's why i'm hard to reach <laughs> <laughs> sean's just always reading. just learning and always reading he's like he'll see a phone call from us be like you have to send Sean actual letters for him to you get back to you. You have to send Sean letters. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, you do. Actually, I will totally answer those. Like, man, I love, yeah, I love, like, more analog than digital. Like, oh, I'm so going to start mailing Sean letters now. <laughs> I'll give, yeah, please do. Like, postcards it's like everything. like text message from et cetera date. <laughs> yeah, it's just like the it's I'll a, buy a screenshot of the, te- of the text shot, of the text mm. message. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it better be stamped with, like, have you, know, you ever wax? Have you ever written on an iPad, like um, like with an Apple pencil and everything? No, I don't think I have. No, no, no. It's a game changer. I was the same way. I have like so many notebooks I bought earlier this year, and I was like, yeah, yeah I'm gonna have a notebook for this and that. And then I got yeah. an iPad and an Apple pencil. Mm. I don't think I'll ever go back. Like, mm, it's huh. just so. And you can just export PDF, send it to someone, or you can save it. And I'm like, yeah. If I was to lose this notebook, or if my apartment caught on fire, all of it's gone. But now this is like... That's why you put them in a the fire safe. At least that's where I put some of mine. <laughs> you put your notebooks in a fire yeah, safe? I put my notebooks in some safes. Man, I've been thinking that's about a, lot a fire of safe. That's a lot of work. It's not. My, my safe's pretty easy to access. So you, before you go to bed, you're, you're journaling. No, 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 no. It's not like... like there are some 
like no, not all that shit. If some <laughs> things get burnt up, then some things get burnt up. But like if it's like some shit that I've been thinking of over the last ten years, like there's a book in there for that. Yeah, you got a journal. Like I have my these. one book in there, not mm-hmm. like all my books. Well, there's an app called Good Notes. Fuck Good Notes. And it's so hopefully they <laughs> What's get sponsored. Wrong with the it's Good Notes. <laughs> What's wrong with one, one of the best. Notepad. I mean, that's the one that comes with it, right? I thought, yeah. Oh, it's not great. I haven't but you used can take it. notes. Look, I'm sorry. Good I'm Notes st- is where it's at. So okay. Good Notes, if you're watching this. I, I am a big supporter of Good Notes. You're late, and uh, we will continue to use your products, especially if you uh, send us some money. You're late, but even if you don't, you do realize so. you're late, though, right? To Good Notes, just in general to what you're doing, because <laughs> Samsung did that like ten years ago. How am hmm. I late? Apple's been doing this for years. I, I'm the one. What do you mean Apple's doing been it? doing it for years? Yeah. How how long has Apple had that Apple pencil? It's on the second generation, so there's probably like a whole first generation. Probably like 2016. <laughs> no, yeah, I know. No, no they have not been out for 26, 2016. You're an Apple hater. I don't. I don't believe. No, anything you're I'm just telling you the truth. I think they have been out for maybe three, four I, years. I'm thinking I'm gonna, maybe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Charles, please, our offset, our offset guy, Charles. <laughs> See, Charles bet, is in the building. Charles, everybody. do you use Apple pencils? Dude, I, I, I can tell Char- so Charles' vibe is money. like an Apple Friday. user, you know? Like, I can definitely Charles tell. Charles is a definitely an Apple user. And you have a Samsung vibe. I mean, look, I, I went and got the phone. After I'm I convinced a, you for no, years. No, no, not because I, you convinced me. I, lo- <laughs> I, I hired a lobbyist. Out of his own volition. I, I literally was just, I bugged you for a year to get that. Look, and I'm about to go get, I'm about to get a Mac during Christmas. So, yeah. like, what the fuck more do you want from me? But this I'm is, telling you right now that that what Apple pencil has not been out for three, for since 2016. Charles uh, is looking it up. Uh, oh. 15, September 2015. Let's go. What? what? Mm. Dude, okay, well, you know why I don't know that? It's because I didn't have money to spend. <laughs> hey, you <laughs> also know why? Yeah. Probably because it hadn't perfected yet because Samsung was already doing it with the note. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a thing for years. No. A stylist from the 90s, they were doing that like years ago. Not I mean, Apple, though. Great. Apple just picked that up in 2015. And they did it the best. And they did it the best. That's so, what they do. They so wait. what you're Ladies saying, though, is throw all your journals and all your pens. Man, I love a good pen on I paper. I love a good feel. pen on paper, too. Yeah. What is like, your problem, it's bro? It's good, but Man. I'm just saying good notes is better. Like Apple Pencil, like you can get you can get a, a screensaver that gives you like, it's like a paper-like, and it feels like you're writing on paper. Okay, so I get that because, so I don't, I don't own an iPad because I literally, like, I thought about it for two seconds. I was like, way too much distractions on there. Like, I'm not about that. Yeah. Like, but... So, you know, in moving backwards in time, but still living in the modern age, I went for one of those um, digital notebooks. Ah. So it's the same, like, they had the paper feel. It's not the remarkable, but um, what's it called? The super note. Mm. Super have you tried note. writing on those? I, I thought about, I, I was it's looking at that note. or the iPad. It's I got the so, iPad. yeah, the, it's an Asian-made company, um, but, like, remarkable, I think one caters more towards writers, and that's the super note. The remarkable is kind of like, it does do everything, um, but I think like Supernote has like more better hands on customer oh. service. They listen to like their the feedback that they get from people when it's sort of more like a what do they call it? Open source. Yeah. 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 I, I, want, I want one of these. The thing yeah. about the iPad, I just feel like it's such a great tool just for filmmakers in general. For example, we were at AFM and like I could pitch our our project Here on files with the PDF, show them the, the trailer, yeah. and then we go to a seminar, yeah. hit record, <laughs> record the whole seminar like on uh, the voice app and take notes. Yeah, so, that's true. I that. know it's it. A, you can like, do that on any tablet. Just saying. <laughs> the most common <laughs> thing that we have is just like the tablet variety. Like, but tablets. Some tablets are choices. trash, though. Like, have you ever like looked at like like the Asus or whatever? Like, they're some of them are not very good. Oh well, one hundred percent. I believe that too. They're, they're the iPad's <laughs> the best tablet you can get. Oh the Apple Pencil is the best writing utensil you can get. It's digital. He's really been trying to get this Apple sponsorship. I don't sponsorship know. I really so like the, the Sharpie Gel point five. Ooh. I like a good like Sharpie Gel. S Gel pen. Ooh. A good yeah. or, or one That's of those, the best writing those utensil. Good, um, <laughs> not the S Gels, but like that fine ink. Hmm. Those pens that bring that pull out that fine like where it's like very like scripted. Oh, yeah, like a fountain pen. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Oh, I don't man. even own a fountain pen. I've only I've, I've never owned one, but I've written one a couple of times. Man, you got one, one in the those, fire safe. Those, <laughs> no, I wish, but hey, now that I'm I'm gonna get one, I'm gonna put it in the safe. We have an ongoing joke. You know Adrian Herrera? Yeah, DP? yeah, yeah. We had him I on here. Him. I told him about this. <laughs> we had Leron on like, like earlier this year, and 
he watched the whole episode and he's like, I listened to that two hour long podcast and I was so mad because y'all did not talk about shit. Like y'all just <laughs> ran around in circles. So now whenever we go on tangents, we're like, Adrian's like mad as hell Adrian's right now bad as listening hell. to it. <laughs> Dude, I think this is why I'm, I'm not big on podcasts because like I only listen to very few and those are the ones that stay on topic. But every podcast that I've been on, the reason why it's been so much fun is because like we, it yeah. goes everywhere. Right. Yeah. It goes yeah. everywhere. So I don't care. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah. Adrian cares. But hey, you know what's funny though? Adrian's still listening. I appreciate your yeah, I, I appreciate say, your yeah, view. You're Adrian. tuning in. A one is the best. <laughs> My guy. Um Love it. So you were behind the camera at first. Well, I wanted to be. And so but you know, like I had I had sort of come up at the very end of like the whole DSLR revolution where I was like shooting on a what was it a T three I okay you know okay. that's mm-hmm. like the first camera that I purchased in like twenty eleven or whatever right um, and same then yeah yeah great camera I mean like I we did like a little documentary that I like drove out to Kansas City from college for and then I was like love this camera like I still have mine you do yeah that's awesome mine. dude I mean I had gave it I had sold it to a friend but like it was hard because I was like my baby in yeah. a sense like. Just like, you know, tiny guy, but like really, really, you know, flexible mm-hmm. in situations. And I think I think it still had like a limit though on card, right? Like you can only like record for fifteen or something. Probably twenty. Yeah. It's crazy thinking about that now. Wasn't the five D like that? You can only record for like so long. It wasn't until a couple of years ago where almost every DSLR camera that shot video couldn't shoot over thirty. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. But now yeah. they changed it. I think Sony was the first one to do it. Like right. the A seven S series or something. A7S. Makes sense. Mm. There are many yeah, A7. Mm. Yeah, trash. <laughs> so, so you, you thought you wanted an AC. You had a, a less yeah. than good experience on your your first or second feature, or so, yeah, that 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 movie. So <laughs> I was working as a grip, and it was equally a terrible and a beautiful <laughs> experience because Damn. it was very much being in the trenches. Mm-hmm. It was very much things being like. Um, handled very poorly from the top down just because it was it was amateur yeah and so i mean we we like went through like five or six different like chefs that were like hired and then fired um what? and just like all sorts of crate like i don't have time <laughs> in the hour to go into all the just ugh, the yeah. shenanigans <laughs> and the just like the drama even um, but it was a really good way to like cut my teeth like in the grip department and from that point on I just like never left mm-hmm. like I just like stayed in grip um, in the back of my mind I wanted to DP actually I wanted to be like the one who's sort of like actually um, Framing. running in there with a vision and then sort of delegating creatively what needs to happen and at this point having done it as long as I have like I just like don't envy a single DP that I've ever worked with anymore. <laughs> it's like, it's, you're always, it's the constraints like really come down to like you being able to handle it, but also handle it in such a way where you're actually not only envisioning the product, but you're delegating from like the client and the agency what yeah. needs to happen. Mm-hmm. And then you're always short on time and money. And then you have to communicate effectively, which is a good skill to have that like to every department, like why, like what needs to be done and why everything else can't be done that, like, they might actually be able to bring to the table. And I think that's kind of where I'm just, like, I care, like, I don't know, like, I, my work is my signature, and I, like, I'm such a perfectionist, and I've, like, grown a lot in that area, but I'm just, like, if I see something, like, I really want to, and I'm always pushing for, like, trying to give the most to, like, my DPs that I can. Right. Mm -hmm. And it is, like, what I've started saying is just, like, your dreams die every day on set. (laughs) So, like, as a DP, I'm just like, you don't even have the opportunity to really like <laughs> bring things to life all the time unless you that want your crew true. to suffer. And we've all been there. Yeah, it's like, true. It's like, what nah. are you willing to do for yeah. this shot? Yeah. Are yeah. you willing to let your crew sit outside for 22 <laughs> hours in the heat, just hang out <laughs> until it's over? <laughs> Talking yep. about one more shot. <laughs> Mm. Sorry, a lot of people know what I'm talking about. If you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> you just yeah, had to be for there. 22 hours. <laughs> for 22, 22 hours. 22 hours. 22 hours. Ooh. You're talking about you shoot videos. Oh you man, damn. I probably we probably could have landed on that. You could have you could have did something differently, but look, that's <laughs> look, on the you. The thing now. is, we, we don't cut. I wasn't there. We don't quack shit out we either. We, we talked about we doing cut. that. We yeah. stopped doing that. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's just facts. Like we got nothing to be scared or ashamed of. Like yeah, I wasn't there for right. one, but for two, from everyone I've heard, it was like. It was a very unpleasant experience. 
that. Bro, I fell asleep in the car. <laughs> yeah, and then I and then I got up and went to go walk the set, and there were people asleep along the side of the sidewalk, like shoulder to shoulder. Ames, I remember. Ames, I forgot who Ames was like paired up with, and like literally, you you will look down the sidewalk and see literally people just. Mm-hmm. Shoulder to shoulder, passed out on each other. Or people were driving by. Like, these people are high on heroin. Like, <laughs> like, look, look at all these bums <laughs> right down here, and green on you. All these homeless people. They're probably just dropping money off. Like get the memo. I put money next to you. <laughs> dropping off sandwiches. Like, like I remember. Uh, I remember Will. Shout out to Will Hera. I remember Will was like bossed up. Was like, look, uh, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> and this was before I really started hanging out with Will. Like, uh, like yeah, kicking it with Will. Will was just like, this ain't for me the whole wow. time. Like, it was cool, but like, it's getting to be that time, and I got shit to do. So. Wow, even he knew. Yes, yeah, yeah that's great. Good. Like, oh my god, yeah, I, I, yeah. I definitely appreciate Will doing that because Will was definitely like, I ain't taking this way shit. to set the precedent, <laughs> set the but, bar right there. But that is a good point about how like self care. The higher up you go, like DPs, directors, producers, like. Y- I feel like you have less fun on set because you can't just like enjoy uh, it anymore. Yeah. You can't just like hang out and mm-hmm. me and Adrian are talking about that. And it's like, he's like, I miss being like a grip or like a, he didn't really PA cause he kind of went straight into DPing. But he's like, when I did grip, like, mm-hmm. you know, they'd be filming it and we'd be like talking at the snack. He was, he brought up by you and, and how he met you on YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. And he's like, it was dope. Cause like for like, you know, a period of time, we're just hanging out, eating crafty, talking, but like as a DP now, like, I'm always on, and I have to like be, be thinking it, be of ready. everything. Your brain is exhausted. It's just adrenaline, right? and yeah. then eight, eight, you know, ten, twelve hours later, you're like, okay, cool, like now I can chill. Mm. But you don't get to hang out anymore and just like kick it, eat fruit <laughs> snacks, like <laughs> that's true. Go, go, go. Well, know? not yeah. yet. You gotta just you gotta <laughs> you gotta just set the environment. But those are the best DPs, though, because yeah, if you if you can set the tone. And it's it's an impossible task to like juggle all that and actually be a person. But like yeah. the best people, the best DPs are the people that like can still interact with everybody like they're a human being. True. And and actually you empower people like to actually do their jobs better. Yeah. The people yeah. that you're walking on glass for, I've realized I'm just like they might be amazing and they might make create like insane work. Um and that's great, that's admirable. But like beyond that, like actually being able to like communicate in a way that like inspires your crew yeah. to do better mm-hmm. you just have to be like a person to them 100 um, percent. have to be a person yeah to them. you can't just bark orders the entire time yeah. i feel like you have to go to the crafty table and eat some fruit snacks with like two or three pas and then be like all right y'all i'm gonna go back over here with this camera thing <laughs> like just be yeah. well that's if, if you the thing is like <laughs> as a dp though you don't have that luxury sometimes sometimes you sometimes. literally have to like sometimes. you don't have enough time but yeah. there are times where Everything lands on the DP, and we're waiting on the DP. And honestly, there, I've seen shoots where we're like catering to the DP specifically. So it's like we're on his time. Whenever he decides to pick up this fucking cameras, when I guess we'll shoot again. <laughs> I mean, low key, it, yeah, that's true. But I think you need to have like a solid, like someone that's already like doing this commercial, or whatever, is like chump change. Like they have like everything lined up, you know, for the whole year, and they're like whatever. Like I've seen DPs that just pull up, and they're super chill because they're like, I don't need this job. Like, you yeah, know, like, yeah. I have, like, You're 10. So not wrong. But, the, like, but the majority of DPs are, like, holy shit, like, I need to fucking kill this. I need to kill this because so I the, need the next job. Yeah, so, yeah. like, the ones that are, like, oh, I'm good. stress trickles down. Yeah, too. exactly. Oh, um, my goodness. It's tough. It's tough to be that leader, which yeah. I think, all that said, I'm, like, I think I'm just so much more comfortable in a servant position, like, in being in service to the DP. I'd rather, like, just, like, push myself as far as I can go to try to, like, make your dream come true like, cause mm-hmm. what, what starts happening is like when you start cutting pages and thing like, that's like when my heart breaks. I'm just yeah. Like, yeah. I was like, I literally want everything that like I'm being asked to do. I want to be able to meet that and then exceed that. Like that's my, mm-hmm. that's my game plan every time. It doesn't matter like what the caliber of the job is. Yeah. But, um, but that's frustrating too. And so like, I just like understanding that like, and no matter what role you're in really, it's just like having like sort of that, that servant heart. It's like, I will do the best that I can with what I have. But right. there's also a line in like, which we can't cross it because like at some point it starts being a detriment. Like if, if there's safety issues, yep. you know, like we've all sen- seen that been there. Um, if people aren't getting taken care of, like obviously like it just like diminishes the whole purpose of being 100%. there. So I think having that balance for me, just like really, really being in a gaffer role is like where I feel like the most comfortable and being able to exercise like and optimize like who I am. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's something we talk about a lot is just like the importance of how our crew feels after they leave our sets. And yeah. like if we're doing something, it's like we want to make sure we prioritize them. Like obviously we have a client or we have like, 
you know, a, a script we have to shoot, but it's like, I, I don't, I care. Like we're going to have more, more I projects. Care. We're going to have more stuff. Like I care yeah. more about like my crew and my crew morale and the cast anything. and everyone involved to have a good experience. Cause it's like, like you've been on set with us. You know how we conduct ourselves, especially yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's always super relaxed. Like it's just like you can perform so much better in those environments. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You don't have twenty guys lined up against the wall shooting up in the heat. I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't, I was like, <laughs> don't put words in my mouth. Are we done yet? Nah, because we still got another four hours left. But it's the last shot. It's the last. But it's the last shot. We promise it's the last shot. Yeah. Yeah. Man. I don't know. That was. Were you on? You, were you? You didn't. I showed up to it actually because I was returning Dan Banks' uh, gas can. I had his gas oh, can. Oh, okay. And I showed up for two seconds and I saw it. I didn't realize that was the shoot. And then later I just like, you know, heard a few things. And I was like, oh, okay, that's what that was like. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was like two seconds and I like had a gist of what was going what on. What was going on? <laughs> you saw the you shit. You mean, you know, you, once you've seen it, you, you understand. Once again, yeah. shout out to Adrian. Adrian was there. <laughs> A1. Yep. I know he's probably, again, like, all right, get back on topic, y'all. <laughs> he's probably cracking up. He was telling me that story like, when we were in Texas. He was telling me all about that shoot. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that that was a different shoot. But no, like, we've yeah. done we've done some great shoots, too. Like, we did. Yeah. We did Vix. Um, we're not together. Sean lit the fuck out of that. That was amazing. You and Tony did a really good job. <laughs> oh on man, that. that was fun. I, I need. We need Vic to make another one. Has what's the last one he did? I don't know. Was Vix working? It was uh, Michaela. Okay. Well, he directed that, right? Or did he? I think he directed. Yeah, he directed that. That, that, that I heard that got into a festival. I don't think I can name it yet, though. Drop name That's drop fair. it yet. But it, I heard it did get into a, fe- a really good festival in New York, though. Nice. So, Very cool. Yeah. So I'm, I haven't I'm, seen I'm, it. I need to watch it. It's. I got the link. I'll show. I'll, we'll, we'll put it on or something like that. But yeah. I'll show you. It's dope. It's actually like I was like, damn, this actually does look really fucking fire. Let's go. <laughs> I was first. That's I was awesome. curious, but like, yeah, and it's been like a year since since mm-hmm. we've done it or seen anything yeah. about it, and then all of a sudden. You get a cut and you're just like, oh shit, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, boy, let's do I love it. it. So yep. oh, that's good. Cool. It's good deal. It's good things. Um Sean, I'm curious what what um so you said you have a background in music? Did you, did yeah. you play instruments or like Yeah, how- dude, music is my first love. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. if I'm honest. Like music was what I wanted my career to be. Mm-hmm. Um and that didn't happen <laughs> for reasons. <Yeah. laughs> um, not because I didn't go for it. I was encouraged to go a different path by my parents. They really wanted me to go to school, so I did. And that's kind of what actually created the the roadblocks in me, like landing in this industry, is because I kind of picked my next favorite thing to do in my eyes. I was like, yeah. cool, I'll do um, this major in film that's brand new at this you know UCM you know school. So, nice. um, but yeah, music is like been my favorite thing it takes the back burner so often which is unfortunate but like i know you do music and i just like oh i had like i'm writing all the time but like i never release things yeah people don't know that like you release them man gotta release man you got to bro just like short films yeah (laughs) yeah just gotta put it out there (laughs) there's so many like music video ideas though and everything that like i've been sitting on for like years i mean there's several projects like one actually might actually see the light of day this year or 2023 maybe yes um working with jesse vander pfeiffer yes. on a project that's like a heavy project um wow so if you if you listen to metal which like i love metal have you have you uh connected with alex mclaren alex, yeah i know alex yeah. he's a drummer he he toured like on a Drummers metal band alex like, is dr- uh he toured on a metal band you know like, alex looks like, like a 18, drummer 19. he does look he like a drummer. straight up looks like a drummer actually he's he a not metal cut his drummer. hair like, like he, <laughs> Yeah, so, like, don't he, cut your hair. Oh, yeah, Alex, don't cut your hair. We had Alex on the other day. He might, he might awesome. come back Enjoy. today. He might swing oh, by. Oh, sweet. Today. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Alex was like low key, like a drummer, drummer. Like he was okay. touring on a band and stuff. He was telling me yesterday. Dude, it's crazy. Awesome. So, did, yeah. did, did Alex watch Whiplash? Yeah, I asked him. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn, I should have asked him that question. Man, one of yeah. the top movies that made me sweat. What's, what's one of your, what's, what's your top three? I mean, look, look, I don't have favorite movies. So, like, let's get that. Me either. Like, let's it's, get that out of the look, way. Like, I don't watch I look movies. at all movies <laughs> as if it's art, like, on the wall. Like, cool, movie happened, game over. Like, I don't need, I don't, it's not my greatest, not the favorite. So, but what would you consider your top three uh, visually yeah. pleasing movies? Visually pleasing? Oh, man. Um... That's tough. Okay, so visually pleasing. I'm just thinking like the cinematography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I think just knowing everything we go into cinematography, so I'm not thinking strictly lighting. Um, I want to say that like Snowpiercer sticks Ooh, out. Ooh, the movie? Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like there's so many choices that are like not 
too far out, but like just different enough for you to notice that like it has a very different like there's like a very different mind coming into mm-hmm. the helm of directing that thing. And who that was? Um, Is that Bong Joon Ho? Yeah, no, I yeah. think that was Bong Joon Ho. Because yeah. like, and have you seen the show? That they spawn no, off of it? No, kind of just, when things happen and they just, like, sort of expand on, like, original things. It's oh. not that bad. Okay. It's, re- like, it's, hmm. you're, like, hmm. you're, like, man, they really, they really did a show off of this. But, okay, like, mm-hmm. let me, let me give it a shot. And, like, yeah, it's, not, you can definitely tell it's very TNT vibe. Because, like, you know, TNT <laughs> yeah, has yeah. that look and all that. But, like, it's not very <gasps> Snowpiercer vibe. But it's definitely, I think the story definitely still hits. And yeah. that's what was interesting yeah. to me was that, that plot, the story plot of, like, have you, or Snowpiercer. I right? haven't. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, just Boy. for this again, like, yeah, for visually, like, striking storytelling, it's a great movie. I mean, I think it has like maybe some holes in there. That, in my opinion, like, yeah, it's not like the like my favorite. If we're talking yeah. like favorite movies of all time, I always gravitate towards like story. So like the words on the page. Yeah. So like 100%. for me, that'd be more like the Last Samurai is like a. I haven't seen the Last Samurai. Long time favorite movie. For okay. Me. Um, I mean, there's there's probably some things in there, like, in the edit now, like, thinking back to it, because I maybe watched it a few years ago, I'm like, okay, it's starting to feel like maybe it's starting to exist in, like, the older, you know, you know 2000s uh, type of format, where, like, we spent a long time here, and that's almost like, I don't, you know, it doesn't really hold up as much anymore. Mm. But overall, overall, like, it's still perfect to me, because, okay. like, even though maybe it doesn't fit, like, within, like, the style of movies than the storytelling that we're doing now. Like, everything's very fast-paced. Everything's very, like, explosive. Everything's very in-your-face. Yeah. I, like, totally gravitate towards more of the slow burn um, and the things that, like, pull on your heartstrings and that are about, like, people. It's people-focused. And, um, mm, interesting. And there's, like, history there, too. Like, it's not entirely completely fabricated. It's actually based, like, like from a time in history. And Tom Cruise does a good job. Like, not... You know, surprised. Not Cruise. like a typical role for him. So I think everything about that movie to me is is perfect storytelling. To watch hmm. that, my mom likes that movie. Soundtrack I'm, is awesome. Yeah, I want to watch that Matt Damon, The Great Wall. I, I heard it's I heard it's not Team America. Good. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Team America? Dude, okay, now we got. <laughs> Actually, I don't. I I've seen parts of the movie. I've never seen. The You've whole never thing. seen no. it. Oh my god! It probably yeah. deserves you, a watch. You sure, gotta definitely watch. Have you seen Team America? No, no, you're too young for that. I feel like. Mm. I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't watch a whole lot of movies. That's my problem. That Dude, is his problem. Wow. Okay, I'm in good company. Finally, man. Yeah. Like, whenever people start talking movies on set, I'm like. I don't, but, I don't know, man. But, I watch more TV than movies. Probably. I watch. I watch more TV than movies for sure. But you watch more YouTube. Yeah, I watch more YouTube. YouTube TV. I'm so <laughs> shocked every time somebody YouTubers. says I still watch YouTube. I'm like, what? Yeah, really? yeah. YouTube's still growing. Like, I know. I feel like it's come up enough times recently where I'm like, I'm obviously sleeping on something and just like don't even know it. Like, yeah. But like, it's been around for forever. I think I just like I don't go to YouTube because YouTube for me was like funny, silly, nonsensical content, and now it's like everything. Yeah. Um, everything. And it's so much easier to like. You know, if you have TikTok to go on there and find a few things and be entertained, then like, sounds so lazy to me. But like, get on a, a desktop and go to YouTube.com and then like, t- <laughs> like go to the search bar and type in what you're wanting. Like, hey, well, I use my phone. What? I use the app more. Like, I don't, <laughs> Who does that anymore? That's he's not wrong. <laughs> I think you might be using YouTube wrong. If you're, still go, if you're still using YouTube on the desktop or a laptop, something's wrong. The app, the app. I do cool. not have it on my phone, so yeah, that's. Oh the yeah. I thought it just comes on phones now. Nah. Do you? I don't even on know. On Google man. phones, it does. But YouTube. Uh, I like on my phone three times a day. That's why we can't get a hold of Sean. Yeah, exactly. I just like. You gotta look. At, you gotta catch him in the morning, like right when he wakes up. <laughs> As soon as he sees it. it. Yeah, an anom- anomaly, bro, because I, I haven't really met anyone that doesn't get online like you. Like, you really disconnect. I do. It's but that's a good thing. I don't even have to try. I think it's just, like, it's just wired into who I am. I, I think I've received flack from people. I've lost out on jobs for it. You know what I mean? Like, mm. people have even, like, brought it up, like, to, like, put it in my radar of, like, you know, hey, this should be in your awareness. Like, you don't respond. You know? I'm like, I will always see it when I see it. But, like, if I'm doing something, if I'm having a conversation with someone, like, that's the number one most important thing. Like, whatever's yeah. happening in front of me. Yeah. And that, that's that like, fair. no matter how you make the argument for, like, the importance or, like, it being the tool in which, like, you're able to be communicated with, like, the things in front of you, like, in the present. Like, that's, 
that's like yeah. what's the most real and I'm the same way. I suck at that yeah. too. Like, Even if there's it, no one in the room, like I'm a sucker for stillness. If I'm playing wow. with Vinny or something and my phone goes off, I will play with Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Until he's done and then I'll go check the phone. It's like, oh damn. Yeah. I'm like this person needed me. That person needed me. That's good to be present. It, that's that's the thing mm. that's what we're all battling with. Like yeah. people that especially Gen Z or younger people, like we struggle with just being present and in silence. Yeah. You know? Always I like it, yeah. but it is hard because like, yeah, you do, you do realize that everybody else is running at a speed that like you, and sometimes you feel like you're missing out or sometimes you feel like you're doing something wrong. But like, mm -hmm. I think it's only benefited me and I haven't like lost that. Like, it's not like I'm not working. I feel like the things that I do, like I'm grateful for. And then I'm, when I'm on the job, I'm on the job too. So I'm also like not, really taking phone calls while right. I'm working. Mm -hmm. um, and I see people do that, and there's nothing wrong with that. But, like, I always respond, like, within 24 hours. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's kind of my MO. But For sure. Yeah. That's, that's dope, Sean's bro. That's goat. <laughs> that's sick. I, I, need to, I need to take some notes from Sean because I have an Apple Watch. I have AirPods in. So. Everybody in production has got the Apple Watch. Yeah. It's, okay. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, I did it, too. <laughs> it's production. Yeah. It was, it was mainly analog. it was mainly for product. But you, I still... I have a boxes full of watches, mm, so like do? I still got watches like that it's are analog, and I got like two watch case. <laughs> I got two watch cases that are full, and I'm just like, they're all all my batteries are dead though. I will say that. What's so the I story? Can't. You just started collecting. Yeah, I had a watch uh, watch gang membership for a little bit, <laughs> and I was just collecting watches for. Maybe like, they just send you memberships or, or watches. Mm -hmm. you pay a hundred, huh. hundred bucks a month, and you get like a two hundred dollar watch, two three hundred dollar watch. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Can I, I still come look through this box? I mean, you can't take any of my watches. You can come look through the box for sure. <laughs> but, okay. but yeah, I definitely, uh, I still like, I'm still a grandfather then too. So like, I won't lose mm. out on my original rate, which at first when I started doing it, it was only like 35 a month and they was, or 40 a month and they would send me like a hundred dollar watch. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, shit, I might as well just keep doing this then. And next thing I know, I had like 20 watches and I was like, I think I don't need that many more watches. So I'll just put it on pause and I put it on pause, but I thought, I thought I paused it. I paused it for like every three months. So like a few months went by and then all of a sudden a watch showed up and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't need this out of my account right now. That's smart. <laughs> they got you. They got yeah, me straight they got, up. Yep. Yep. They got me straight up. But no, watch gang is the shit though. Watch I love gang. watch gang. Yeah. Okay. Watch gang. Never heard they, of they've blown up in the last like eight years. V Virginia told me about it originally. Just like YouTube. Mm -hmm. Literally, just like YouTube. YouTube's been dominating, bro. Like, there's been so many platforms trying to dethrone YouTube, and they've not gone anywhere. Like, YouTube is... No one could ever dethrone YouTube. YouTube is the Google of... Hey, video. now, Hold somebody on. was probably saying the same thing about Blockbuster, like... Hey, you're not wrong. 20 years ago. They were all saying the same thing about Netflix, and there is no way anyone's ever yeah. going to compete with Netflix. Boom. Streaming wars. <laughs> Streaming wars. Look right where we're at now. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're probably right. You're probably right. <laughs> Look where we're at. Now. Where there's way too much content and very little of it is good. <laughs> and that's that's one thing we learned at AFM is that like they just want content. Mm -hmm. If it's done, that's even better. We we just we need content that's done so we can go ahead and get it out there for in, for our audiences. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I get yeah. it. But I mean I guess it's good for us. It's good and bad because Yeah. It's good because there's, there's a demand for it, but it's bad because uh, they were saying how, like, you don't get paid as much, like, yeah. up front, you know? It, it's, it's less money. Like, before streaming, they said you would cut a deal. Like, you would sell your project there, mm -hmm. and you would get, like, a big lump sum of money for your project. And now it's, like, cut by, like, streaming contracts. So it's, like, yeah. over a five-year span, you might get, you know, this percentage from Netflix or Hulu or whoever, but mm -hmm. you don't get that money up front. So your first two years, you might not make any money off your movie. Then the third year, maybe it goes on yeah. Hulu, and then you get, like, a big quarter, you know, and you get, like, $50,000 for it. But it's, it, so, it's so funny to see, like, some, you know, some A-list actors, like, just, like, in shows being promoted on all these, plat you know, like, Adam Scott and Severance or, you know, Ewan McGregor. Like, there's just, like, so much, so much content in all these shows. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, these big-name actors that, like, we know from being, like, you know, Kingpin are, like, doing the content. Mm -hmm. like game essentially like just playing into the hands of you know the content wars that we're in the middle of right now yeah which is great you know if, because like i mean if you're an actor then you love to act like yeah you should, but but like i'm like you're I, I can't look at those promotions and be like they're making the same amount of money as they used to mm. yeah which, it's got to feel interesting to be one of those cats right now you know yeah um i wonder but i mean you and gerger just did 
Kenobi, right? He just did a was it mm-hmm. was it a Kenobi series? I know he yeah. had to get some. He got some. I think they're ma- he might be making more money because they were saying it's harder to book um, talent now because they're mm-hmm. on back to back to back to back to back. Oh, because of TV. TV TV yeah. is just way uh, longer. It's a more time commitment than than movies. Than yeah, yeah, a lot more naturally. stars are going. So they're making. TV. I think they're making probably even. I don't know if they're making more money, but they're making a lot of money. Like, and I feel like endorsements have have skyrocketed too lately. Yeah, like from back from like, mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't see a lot of like movie stars and commercials, but like nowadays you see a lot more movie stars spearheading commercials and whatnot. And also like just content, like true. Well, know, just, yeah, just content actors have podcasts that now are like, sponsored by Adobe or sponsored by whatever. So like, mm-hmm. their podcasts are probably generating a lot of revenue too. You yeah, know, and yeah. the content. But y'all are playing like the YouTube game, so you're very much like aware of like how everything is rolling out right now. He's yeah, very yeah. much aware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you kind of have to be though. Like, I mean, yeah. you're dipping your toe in the water and more than that. Like, yeah. you know. And then, I mean, you're on TikTok too. And then I'm, I've seen you like here and there. So yeah. Whenever I have, I just, I mean, pass. I love YouTube, and I've kind of like grown into it. But YouTube's interesting because if you're a content creator on YouTube, you have to understand marketing, like. As like a step one, because the thumbnail, title, like, so it's like you YouTubers and these new content creators <laughs> are marketers first, and then they have to figure out how to tell a story or capture an audience, which is interesting. And we were just talking about that yesterday with Mr. Beast. Have you ever seen Mr. Beast videos? No. Mr. Beast is like the biggest YouTuber, bro. And naturally, he's, he's like no skyrocketed. Um, the guy who gives out like free cars and free houses and shit. He's like I'm, the Oprah of YouTube times ten. Like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Like he has videos like. Go him. He'll have like a <laughs> last person to get their hand off this plane wins I'll this take a car. jet. Or yeah, or uh, he did the the real life like the squid fake game. squid game whatnot. Oh the okay, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Squid yeah. Games. yeah. Um, sweet. Anyways, so he's like, <laughs> he's figured out how yeah, to. I'm, see, me and Sean are the same way. <laughs> yeah. You can tell me and Sean are closer. Yeah, in man. Age let's than go you to the Alex library right. after this. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just right down the street. Yeah, I know. Let's need a really good book. The Downtown Library is nice. Books in my backpack right now. <laughs> oh my goodness. I would low key need to return some books from like five years ago. Damn. But no, yeah, he, um, he's more like we were saying with Alex. Like he's more of a marketer too at first, and. um because the way he does his videos is freaking insane. Yeah, I mean, he has so much money, or he puts all the money that he makes into the videos. So he'll give away, like, a jet. And it's like, okay. it'll be a game, have 10 contestants, and it'll be like, last person to remove their hand from the jet wins the jet. So it's Oh, like, I've heard about that. I've, somebody's talked. Yeah. So it's like reality TV and challenge videos, but... Yeah. Uh, like that just gets him hundreds of millions of views. And I mean, when he's, like that one video where he's like, you got to give away all 50 cars in 24 hours. It's like... <laughs> Yeah. Fuck, I want to be that guy to just <laughs> randomly get a car and it's like just calling all my friends like you want a car? You want a car? Like I don't know if you're joking or not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust this. Does insurance come like, with it's it? Sponsored by Carvana. There's a lot of scammers <laughs> right sponsored now. by Carvana. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Carvana. Yeah. I think they're still in hot water though. Oh, for what? I don't know about this. Uh Are they, they doing things some, under the table? They had some bad business practices apparently. Passing around some of that Walter White. We're about to find Walter out. White. All right, while actually. you look that up, um, <laughs> let's talk about. Um, he really wants to know. <laughs> I really want to look it up. No one's going to stop you. I'm, I'm all for it. <laughs> what has it been like? Um, so now that you're, you're gaffing, right? For people that want to get into GE, um, people that really don't know much about GE mm. or how you make a living doing that, what does that look like for people? It's a good question. I think everybody I've ever talked to has had. Um, there's just non-traditional paths left and right. It mm-hmm. doesn't all look the same. So like, it's kind of hard to say what you should do, but what you need to have and like kind of make a part of your just integrated mindset is just that I need to be someone who is teachable and a learner. Mm-hmm. Like there's just so many things like, and, and it's an industry that changes so fast. Like we've, I remember buying like, a bunch of LED lights in 2015. I still have a couple of those. Yeah. And at the time, I just don't think that they were like as, you know, as punchy or as color accurate. And so it was like an early investment, like on the cusp of like everything that we know now, just like apertures everywhere. And, you know, yeah. man light is like coming up with their own, you know, versions of that. And there's all these cheap additional options that are like, you know, are great. So I've seen a lot of younger kids like just dive right in just because like there's a lot of things that like, with a little bit of investment, even though it's still clearly expensive, like you can actually get your hands on something. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I did the same thing. I prioritized the tools. Mm. Um, 
And I sort of did it like just to help elevate myself in scenarios where I kind of was looking for opportunities to get my foot in the door. And I kind of put um, the value in the gear and Mm. like instead of like myself. Um, So if I, you know, if I could do something differently going back, I would just say not that I didn't do this because I absolutely threw myself at like every opportunity I had. Right. But I would say like pocket that cash and don't just like jump in and buy a bunch of tools that you're not going to be really working with like on like bigger scale productions. Like Mm. we still work with HMIs. We still, you know, run, you know, banded. Like we still, you know, run things off generators. Like a lot of people don't know how to like, you know, balance loads, you know, properly and things like that. And you don't have to worry about it when you're working with like minimal power. Everything is like, you know, 15 amp or more in a house. And so like you just plug things in and turn them on. So I just think that like if you really want to like have the the basis of knowledge that could actually make you um, useful in more than just one situation, which is like the the proverbial like quick fast paced like you know commercial job that has like you know a ten person crew. Like if you want to be a little bit more um, just be teachable and adaptable and like actually like gravitate towards people that are mentors and if you're doing the hiring like hire people who like know a little bit more than you like always surround yourself with people that are more knowledgeable than always you. hire the greats <laughs> and like i never say that to people like because i want to get hired but i i have said it to people so being like hey you're like asking me the question and being really open and honest about like where you are and like knowing that you're like still have a bunch to learn like i've worked with those dps who just like don't understand lighting so like have the conversations beforehand like emphasize pre-production and the importance of those conversations Mm -hmm. going into it so that they can actually educate you on what you need um and yeah for people who want to like be in genie which i feel like is really rare um just like yeah just show interest in it i mean like so many people want to go in camera that like honestly a lot of times i'm not even looking for people because i think they want to go into another department. They want to direct and they want to, and that's all great and fine. But yeah. I mean, I still do too. Like I want to tell stories, but like my whole J O B like what I do for money is not like, it's not what I feel called to do. It's like, it's my career path, which is lighting. So um, those things can be separate. You can have an occupation and a calling, and that's what I'm learning. Yeah. But I rabbit trailing, I feel like just being teachable and actually gravitating towards those people and actually, like, being open about where you are. Yeah. Um, I've heard stories where people, like, will introduce themselves as something to, like, someone else who's done this for years and years and years, and it's just like, oof, okay. Yeah. Like, you know, you can do that. Like, I mean, if I'm working with a certain group of people, like, I'm, I'm a grit. You know, I'm a... I'm a whoever you need me to be. I'm a swing. But, yeah. like, I do probably 80% of the work I get is gaffing. So it's how people know me. But, like, I won't introduce myself as a gaffer to, like, certain cats just because, Yeah, you know. it, it also plays into, like, the whole idea of, well, for one, being a freelancer, a lot of it's branding. And you have to be able to know how to represent yourself, um, especially when a lot of the jobs you get are kind of, like, from networking, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're not representing yourself in, in a way that you want to get hired for, like you can expect to not get hired for it, you know, like, cause mm-hmm. you're not, that's very much the thinking of our generation though. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I think just like having discretion, like having a little bit of wisdom and being like, okay, like when, when do I brand myself and market myself as such, therefore as a, as a means in order to get such and such jobs Yeah. where, where do I make myself a, a novice because I am actually, in fact, a novice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. yeah, but. No, that's very true. And it's also, like, you, to call yourself a director or a DP, like, for one, like, that's a very, uh, it's a lot harder to get hired as those uh, than, yeah. than, like, you know, a, a grip, swing, AC, like, stuff like that, which is kind of what I think a lot of people realize, like, those higher, like, jobs, like, you might, like, even now, I work, you know, as a DP, and I don't AC as much or grip, but, like, um, you know, I'll get more cam op- cam opping jobs than DPing, but, uh, like, you still have to be aware of, like, okay, like, if I'm going to promote myself as this, like, I have to know, like, I need to actually get these type of jobs, because if I don't, like, I can't really just PA 
and call myself a DP or director until like I start doing that. Like I have to make that mm. jump, you know, yeah. which means you have to turn down work, which means you have to like have the cash flow to be like, okay, like I've saved up enough to where I can take that risk. But um, it also is like yeah. really important to know maybe like you don't want to do that. Like maybe mm-hmm. you just want to gaff and maybe you just want to work in the camera department. Um, it's like a conversation I had with Craig Richard as well. Cause uh, he was, he was like, you know what? I might just want an AC. Cause he's always, he's always wanted a DP. And I feel like that's everyone's natural inclination. Mm-hmm. Like coming out of film school and being younger, it's like, I want to be a director. I want to be a writer. I want to be, you know, this and that. Mm-hmm. But then when it comes to like actually making the living off of it, it's like, Hey, like there's an abundance amount of opportunities to make money in the film industry. Mm-hmm. We don't have to be, you know, pigeonholed to like true our, you know, our, our, our end goal. True. And I think you put that really, you put that yeah. really well. Like you, you said, you're, your calling and what was other your one? occupation? Yeah, yeah. They can be. They don't have to be. You know, the exact same thing. They can be exclusive to one another. 100%. Yeah, yeah. And I, I like the way you, you worded that. Yeah, I think the, the other kind of thinking of our generation that has sort of been a trap that like I think I fell into is just like that I could like sort of have them be both, like both of those things be the same thing, and that that was preferable. But I actually feel like it's you empower yourself to have something that is like, you know what puts bread on the table keeps a roof over your head and then you're just taking like the time that you have left in the in the money that you're acquiring and learning how to save and like you know um just manage well and just like learning how to like turn the you know the lamp on and burn that midnight oil and like work on something that like really means something to you yeah um and i think that's like something that's been like a struggle for me because i literally thought i was like "A, a i can dive in i can like prioritize the tools and that will like like somehow add value to myself instead of actually valuing like myself and like my growth and my person, like my person. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, all that said is like, there's, yeah, maybe everyone's just got a different method too, but I think as long as you're teachable, um, you know, a lot of times I think I struggle with this on a personal level, but like, I usually like to wait for clarity and then act. And then something I'm realizing now is that like action actually leads to clarity. Mm. So like you might be the person who's like, I'm going all in. Like, I know I have what it takes because I had this mindset too. Like, I have what it takes. Like, I'm going to buy the camera. I'm going to buy the lenses. I'm going to buy the, like, the stands. And then, like, I'm going to have the full package. That way I can just hire people and go for the clients. And, like, that did not work for me. <laughs> like, like, and it wasn't, like, a big fight. But, like, there was just, like, some closed doors here. And I think my path just opened up in this other direction. And that was, like, the g and Roger. So. Will you mute it? Get him out of here. Mute it or decline it. Well, the client is a mute it so it stops ringing. Can you not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say Apple. Dude, I don't know. I know how to work one of those. Put me in. Put me in, coach. <laughs> I'm dead. Give it here. Sorry, Broderick. Here. I had to mute you. I almost declined you. <laughs> <laughs> but all that said, like, yeah, I think if you're the person who like those doors may open for you and they may not, and it's just like a combination of like a lot of factors, like your personality, like mm-hmm. just like what is your actual. Um, skill sets, like the things that are like your natural, you know, gifts and abilities versus like just where where there's actually like openings in the industry where like, you know, there's right. actually a need mm-hmm. um, and what your interest is, like and what actually makes you feel like uh, you're part of the team. Yeah. For sure. So, yeah. Yeah. Mike keeps like... Is that your mic? Yeah. <laughs> um, I know no, how to work that too. I can, I can help with that. It's very, very wise Love words. <laughs> We haven't hit a button yet. How did we not know? How did I not know that you was there? You want to hit a button? You hit a I button? do. Okay. Uh, I want this one. <laughs> ah. I was like, we haven't hit the button all, all, all episodes. So, like, we need to hit a, we need a reason to hit a button dumb. real quick. <laughs> Straight dumb. <laughs> I'm mad about okay. that one. So, wait. Okay. If I remember correctly, when we were on We're Not Together, did you have an invention that you created and brought to set? Okay. I, so... <laughs> That literally, like, this has been, everyone asked me this. I need to get on this. Like, my mom, who will probably see this, she helped me develop from that shoot when I went to Aransas Pass, Texas, like, working off of that grip truck and just, like, you know, doing overnights on the beach and just, like, being asked to run back to the truck and, like, pull out gels and blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, there's got to be a better way. Like, we came up with this thing where we, like, basically put, like, we bought guttering, like, sections of gutter Mm -hmm. and then just, like, put it in a milk crate and then that we'd slide our gels in there. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I was like, you know, I don't know. It just, there, to me, it was just like, there was something better. There's so, some- like, my entrepreneur mind kind of went to work 
So I designed this thing um, with the, the help of my mom who basically just like listened to the problem that I was facing at work and basically was like, okay, what if we modify something that's pre-existing? We have these gel rolls that you can buy, but the, the problem and the reason I don't like gel rolls is like because the gel lays flat. Right. So you still got to like, like lift own. every single one and then like you're looking through them and they're translucent. So you can't really get a good accurate, you know, like what you're looking at unless it's labeled and like, who labels them? Labels a lot of people things forget, anymore. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, whenever you skin it and then just like throw it back, I'm just like, please don't do that. But it happens. And so, um, but anyway, like, like basically, I was like, okay, this is cool because it rolls up. But what if we like had like these like notches where because you already roll up gels anyway to mm-hmm. kind of like storm, um, so that they're like individual. So we created this gel roll, yeah, that basically holds already like you know wrapped up gel rolls like one at a time so it's like got 30 or 40 different loops yeah and you just like slide it through and label it um you have you seen it before i have seen it okay i think tony bought one from you too as well he he bought a couple um lights on bought like four like a month or two ago yeah i mean just to have on their trucks i mean like is it on your site you don't even have a website, oh, dude. Oh, Sean. I need help. We need help, Sean. I need help. We're going to help you. Yeah. Sean, okay. we're going to help you. We're going to help you. Yeah. We got I need you. to leverage some of these. We got you. Yeah. I didn't. No, wait, you should That wasn't a joke. You hit the... Wait. <laughs> oh, wait. No. Wrong, wait. One, wrong, no. one, wrong one. Wrong one. Okay, that's yeah. the wrong one, too. There it is. There it yeah. is. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I think it's a great invention, but I've kind of sat on it for a couple of years. And so yeah, with all a, these color lights coming out with those, that's that, true. It's kind of like, but like you said, though, yeah. we're still using technology from back then. We're still using big Fresnel lights and all that shit. It's like, why not still do it? Yeah. <laughs> like what's never hurts. Yeah. It never hurts. I mean it, and they've been selling here locally. So yeah, it just needs, it needs product photos and it needs like uh, a way to sell. You can do all that. I know. <laughs> I know that requires getting on a computer and freaking. Oh, that's right. Sean is my computers. <laughs> Forgot me and Sean stay grounded. You know, Oh man, yeah. we try, we try, we try. We're going to go on a, he a, said you on can a do it. barefoot walk. This summer. Bare, you can go, like, I would love it. Have you ever been, gra- have you been grounded? Have you? Oh, actually it's a really good day to actually go <laughs> yeah, grounding. Yeah, it would be. Is, is it, the weather's nice today? Yeah, it's like 58 yeah. outside. Went for a walk this what? morning. Yeah, it's supposed to be 60 yeah. this Sunday. Wow. Yeah. We need good. to go run some routes. Yeah, I'm down. Run, run. Run. Oh, well, I won't be here Sunday. No. I'll be gone. Okay. Thanksgiving Whatever. for all this weekend. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, the turkey bowl. Yeah, it's too late for you to sign up. Is it? I can't just show up. That's sports. We're no. talking sports. No. Yeah, we're talking sports. You, you didn't me. sign me up? I didn't know you were going to be in town. I thought you were gonna be in Texas. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna be here. <laughs> he, he does this. He just he says stuff it, that you, makes yeah for no reason. It's like what I have a full circle of everything that like, but not what you're trying to say. I do the same thing. Like we get each other. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, real quick, I do want to ask you before we have to get off here. Um, where do you see film progressing in the next like five to ten years, and how do you where? want it to progress? Like okay, yeah, like in the grand the umbrella beast as it were like where do i see it like growing Mm -hmm. or how do you want it yeah it's either or yeah 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 yeah. i don't know i think in light of what we were talking about earlier like the content wars things has me sort of like feeling a little bit um what's the word a little bit sort of like i can't think of the word that i want to say but just like discontent with, like, mm-hmm. the fact that, like, I feel like so much of the emphasis is going on pumping out content yeah. versus, like, the storytelling. Because I think every now and then I might watch something that really um, hits me in the same way that, like, it may be used to as a kid. And I think as a kid you naturally I just have, like, that that wonder and, like, those rose-colored glasses more on anyway, mm. um, you know. But to create something like that for the next generation that's, like, really moving and impactful, like, on a really deep level... Um, instead of just something that's like entertainment, you know, I think that that is the direction I would like <laughs> film to go in. I don't gotcha. think it's going in that direction. I think it is. It is very much about like numbers, and but it's also been a business since the very beginning. It's been about money. Yeah. Like so, I mean, the reason Hollywood is the way it is because it's always been about. It's always been a money a and business. politics. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like you'll never separate that from anything. Nope. So like you know politics being the science of of people like anything that we do or make is going to relate to somebody in a way where somebody's going to leverage it for money because they see a need there and so it's just going to always have that sort of corporate feel to it um but in light of all that 
I don't know. I feel like it'd be really cool if sort of like, you know, we're on this climb and it would be really interesting to see if people started getting really thirsty for like stuff that like actually had a little bit more heart because I feel like it's out there, but I just feel like there's a lot of people um, and we exist in like a very unique cultural moment too where like we really want to like, we have more accessibility and things are more affordable and, um, and there's like a sense of wanting to elevate people and elevate voices and that's all really important. But I think right now it just feels like it's just like oversaturated yeah. to me. Um, oversaturated with um, just like Sharknado 40. A lot. Of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, of which I've never seen, but love to one day. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Put me in coach. I'll be a grip. <laughs> <laughs> would you ever would you would you ever grip a Sharknado movie? Would you gap uh, a Sharknado movie they asked you? Probably actually, yeah. And probably. It was for half the rate? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, like no, we'll no, put no. you up in everything, but it's only <laughs> half the rate. Yeah, I would do it just to laugh. Like, I mean, God. I think like, about the stories that come from those sets though. Like yeah, we, exactly. we we ran into that company too that does those that movies. Does those. And like yeah. They have a fan base, and oh, it's crazy man. to think that, like, <laughs> it exists. Those fan bases exist. <laughs> the people who want they more do, Sharknados, though. they want the trimmers. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you know what trimmers is. You I little. think that's where the argument comes to where it's like, uh, like, for all, like, uh, these, it's like everything's so corporate and political, mm-hmm. and then, like, the politicians and the corporate people are like, yeah, but, like, we're just responding to what people want. <laughs> Because if they didn't want it, they wouldn't buy it or watch it. Dude, sometimes so, giving people what they want <laughs> is like a bad. two-edged sword. Yeah. It's such a bad thing. It is. Thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, it always is. <laughs> I would do it. I'd produce a Sharknado movie. Dude, for that's ha- for a half, lot of for half my rate. I wouldn't let the you The shark's do it. right there. Look scared. Look scared. The shark's right there. I wouldn't let you do it. <laughs> I would do it just so I can see you do that. Hey. But like, I don't want to be like being like, okay, cool. We're going to make this look really good. I'll be like, no, you just tell me where to be and what time. <laughs> because like, I just want to show up and laugh at how bad the script and is. And like, yeah. So <laughs> shout out to those Sharknado sh- creators though. Like I respect all filmmakers hundred yeah. percent. I only make fun of things because I like it at the same time. Yeah. So it's equally as hard and as expensive to make something really terrible as it is something really good. That's true. It's very true. Yeah. It's very true. I think we've all learned that. You got, yeah. food, you, you got anything you want to work on next? You got anything you, you honestly, you I do? think the things that I really want to do, um, I've kind of gravitated towards like putting any thought towards, anything that would be like a script, even though I've, I've sat on ideas, I think more the visual storytelling that I'm wanting to do is actually using the, my music as like nice. oh, foundation. Yeah. So there's just like a lot of really like personal things that I've written that have started years and years ago that I'm still like kind of letting the work like build itself and I'm not like in a hurry, but I think some things will be ready to actually maybe actually like start producing like a shoot here and there. Let's go. Let's like, go. To actually kind of accent. For it. Yeah. And then also like getting in the studio and just like going from demo to, yeah. you know. I um, love you know. it. I love how a lot of people yeah. have um, have the music background. They got into yeah. film. It's crazy. Yeah. Like a lot of people who got in the film <laughs> were in the music at first. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm glad this became my J-O-B and that, that the music can be like more of the passion thing. Yeah. As opposed to like, Facts. you know, originally being younger and wanting it to be the other way around yeah. maybe, mm-hmm. but. I yeah, just knew I, I always wanted to go into entertainment. Like, mm-hmm. I, well, I knew sports was yeah. my thing for sure. And I, in my eyes, like, sports is entertainment. And then I started doing music, and then I'm like, this could be fun too. And then, yeah. like, I had never had <laughs> the thought is. about film. Yeah. And, like, yeah, oh my God, it was a whole different, whole Jeez. different ball game. So, for sure. But no, man, Love thank it. you so much for coming on. Yeah, man. On the fun. podcast. Good. Thanks for yeah. me, y'all. I think yeah. this was a good conversation. I think we think A1, we give this an A1 rating. <laughs> I mean, he'll have to, he'll have to give us that, okay. that rating. Oh, who, who's the one who does it? Adrian. Adrian. Adrian, yeah, okay. Adrian rates our all of our episodes now. Yeah. He's the unofficial like. <laughs> He's the unofficial yeah. critic. <laughs> Gotta have him. Shout out to A one. Yeah, well, Sean, it's been a pleasure, man. Thank it's you so much for coming by. Dude, it has been. Thank you. We're gonna work Appreciate real soon. Yeah. Let's no, now, do it. Yeah, yeah. Now that now that now that you're staying, that you yes, didn't leave. we didn't talk about that, but I'll be around. So for those yeah. of y'all, we'll talk about, about that next time. We're gonna we're definitely bring you back on let's for sure. It. For sure. So. Yeah. But thank you, everybody. We appreciate you coming by. This has been filming in progress. Filming in progress. Oh,